Nether fortresses are one of the oldest structures in Minecraft, but still very important to progressing in the game. Giving you access to brewing ingredients and the end, I'll show you how to find and raid one starting right now. Now the first big question of course is how do you actually find a nether fortress, as you usually don't spawn in one when you go to the nether for the first time, although you can always get lucky that way. And I would say the main way to get them is to literally just explore around the nether looking for nether bricks and if you see one then you can go raid it. However there are some other methods of doing it. So for instance you can use chunk base and go to their general seed map. Then click to the drop down go to the nether and you can find a nether fortress that way. Do note it does not show you where 0, zero in the nether is so you'll want to make special note of that to know which fortress is nearest to where you are. Also something good to know is that if you do find another fortress, I'm not sure if this is coincidence or not, but I have found it does seem to happen that either north or south from the nether fortress there'll be more of them that generate, so they'll sort of generate in a line. So if you find a fortress and want to raid another one, maybe to get some more loot or just to find a better looking fortress, try going north or south from it and you could very likely find one in the nether 3 to 400 blocks. Now if you're going on a seed finder or just exploring around, something I would say you should probably be looking for is a nether fortress that is in the soul sand valley. The reason why is that because of the way that mobs spawn in Minecraft, the soul sand valley will give you way more hostile mobs in your nether fortress. So for instance things like getting a bunch of blaze rods or a bunch of wither skeletons, it'll be much easier to do in the soul sand valley fortress as I found they give you about three times more mobs. And basically the reason why is that not many mobs can generate in the soul sand valley so most of the mob cap is concentrated in the fortress itself. And this gives you a much larger number of mobs that can generate here. But when you are looking for one, something that is good to remember is that they can spawn in any single biome, not just the Soul Sand Valley, so it could be like in the Soul Sand Valley right here, but it could also be in maybe that Nether Wastes there, or it could be in a Basalt Delta, a Crimson Forest, really just any biome you can find them in. Now I wouldn't generally recommend going into a Nether Fortress with no items on you, so what items should you bring to another fortress to make sure that raiding it does not turn into death? As unfortunately, one of the most common deaths in Minecraft comes from the first time you raid the nether fortress. Two items you can get very easily from trading with piglins that I would definitely suggest having is a splash potion of fire resistance as well as a respawn anchor. Because the respawn anchor is made out of crying obsidian and glowstone, the first thing you're going to want to do is get that respawn anchor you traded for, charge it up with glowstone, right click again and have your respawn point set. This isn't necessary but it can definitely be useful as dying at the nether fortress is pretty common. The next thing you want to have is a shield, some armor. Now iron armor will work but of course the better the armor the safer it'll be. You also of course want to have your main tools. You want to have a lot of food, that's something I actually can't stress enough is a lot of times I'll go to the nether fortress with maybe 8 or 10 pork chops or 8 or 10 of some piece of food and I'll run out and I'll end up dying of starvation in the nether as of course you can't always get access to the mushroom soup. As much fire resistance as you can get, if you can get a bunch from the piglins good but if you can't try and get at least one splash potion of fire resistance for emergencies. Also a stack of torches, a couple stacks of building blocks and some arrows as well as a bow are incredibly useful. So what loot and potion ingredients do you actually get from the nether fortress? Well the first thing is you get fortress chests which can have really good loot. This one doesn't but they can have things like diamonds, diamond horse armor, saddles, gold and obsidian. They're actually one of the best chests in the game just because there's a very high chance of getting diamonds in them. As well as that these chests are rather common making it not be rare to see two of them right next to each other in a hallway. And the next thing you get in the nether fortress is nether wart. Now these sort of have a little farm next to the stairway where you can find them. And they can also spawn in the chests here. So whichever way you find the nether wart in the fortress, this is actually the only place to get nether wart in the game. Although there is one in four types of Sebastians that has a very very small nether wart farm at it. Ideally the best place to get it will always be at the nether fortress. And of course once you have some you can just grow it on the soul sand. Blaze rods are something really important that you get from the nether fortress. 
And they're also the only place to get the blaze rod in the game. Although there are a couple places where you can find brewing stands to get the actual blaze rod. Of course used to make the brewing stand, but also used for the blaze powder to power the brewing stands. Blaze rods are an essential piece of loot that you have to get when you go to the nether fortress. As well as the blaze rod, there's another mob drop which is vital loot in the fortress, and that is the wither skeleton skull. This drop is actually so rare that when you get it you get the advancement spooky scary skeleton, which is of course a reference to a popular internet meme. And this is how you get the withers later on in the game. And other things that you find at the nether fortress, which is pretty decent loot, is you can get magma cubes that spawn here, that'll give you magma creams. You can also get mushrooms for fermented spider eyes. And you can get glowstone that'll occasionally generate a round, which can give you glowstone dust, which is also useful for brewing. Now, completely independent of what biome the nether fortress is in, there are certain mobs which can generate here. They are the blaze, like those two right there. They are the wither skeleton, the standard skeleton, the magma cube, as well as the zombified piglin. These five mobs can all be quite deadly, and so I'll show you how to deal with each one of them. First, we have the blaze. Now, this is definitely not the most efficient way of killing them, but something you can do for fun if you want to is kill them with snowballs. Snowballs will kill the blazes if you can hit them successfully seven times. As you can see right there, we just killed that blaze with a snowball, but it definitely is not very fast and can be a good way of dying. The problem with them is that you could think, well, you could just spam right click on them to kill them really instantly, but because of an invulnerability timer between shots, basically meaning you can't just spam click to kill them, it's not super easy to kill them very quickly with that. Still a fun method though. Realistically, you want to have a bow and a shield. Now a bow can fully block the fireballs, as you can see right there and an arrow will give you the capabilities to kill these. Now, of course, the only thing to worry about is sometimes the blaze rods will drop down into lava, so you want to be careful and note the position of the blaze when you kill it. But for instance, right here, you can see it successfully dropped that one, and we can go over there and grab it, as well as pick up our extra arrows. Now, there are two places where blazes can spawn. They can just spawn anywhere in the fortress, but there's also dedicated blaze spawners, which sometimes generate. To disable one of these, which is sort of like a way of defeating the blaze, place a light block on top of it. Then, about two blocks away from that, place another light block on the ground, and do that for every single corner, even placing one in this direction from it. So the first one goes on top, and these other four go two blocks away from it at the exact same height that it's at. And to fully disable the spawner, put a piece of glowstone in every single edge. And there's the final one, and we've more or less made a grid here with two blocks in between each piece of glowstone. All of them are at the exact same height, except for, of course, the one on top of the spawner. And you can always break these later on when you want to and kill the blazes. You can also just spam torches around here, but I do think it looks a little bit nicer to have the exact set out with the glowstone blocks. And the blaze from the spawner are the exact same as any other blaze. However, they are more common here, so if you're trying to farm those blaze rods for the eyes of ender or for brewing, then probably the best idea is to do that at a blaze spawner. So that is how you defeat the blaze. Now for wither skeletons, what's the best way of dealing with them? Well, if you happen upon a wither skeleton in the inside part of the fortress, they have the same thing as an enderman does, where they're three blocks tall. So because of that, if you put blocks in the air like this, they can't get through it. But also in this one part of the fortress here next to the nether wart, they also can't get through here. So if you can run through there in time, you can successfully avoid the wither skeleton. But in any other area, just put the dirt blocks up here or anything else you want. And that wither skeleton will be stuck and you can easily get rid of it from there. Now you could always bring a milk bucket if you get hit by the wither skeleton, as they will give you the wither effect if they do happen to hit you. So that can be definitely a good way of avoiding this very deadly effect. It also makes it very hard to see how much health you actually have, which can lead to an even worse chance of death because you're not sure if you can take risks or not. Now if you're trying to get the wither skeleton skulls, make sure to use a sword with looting 3 on it, as that will provide you a much higher chance. And of course, just like with the blade, if you can use a bow and arrow, that can often be safer, as the more range you have from a target the better. Just be aware you can't really use looting with the bow. So with the blaze and with the wither skeletons, it's not going to give you as many drops. What about the zombified piglin? Well, I have one piece of advice for that, and that is just do not punch them. Now, of course, the zombified piglins aren't actually hostile mobs. 
but oftentimes when reading a fortress you'll accidentally hit one of them, which can be quite deadly, although on their own there's no danger to them. But an arrow firing at another mob by accidentally hitting the zombie pigmen will mean all of them in the entire radius that is rendered in will try and get you from every direction, which will 99% of the time prove fatal, as they will not become passive until they've killed you, and that can definitely lead into a death spiral. For skeletons I would just say make sure to use a shield, and when they get close to you, once they've hit you once, come up to them and hit them, because of course once they've fired an arrow, there's a small cooldown where they can't hit you, and so you can use that to dodge the arrow. So for instance they hit right here, and now we can safely hit it with having our shield down. And I mean shields even work for things like wither skeletons if you want to use it for that, just a bit riskier. And also fighting skeletons with bows and arrows can be good. Now for the last mob that specifically spawns in another fortress, and that is the magma cube. This mob is oftentimes a lot more dangerous than you would think. Because of the way it works, there's no cooldown timer of how much damage it can give you, meaning that you can actually lead into a very, very quick death if you're touching it or if it lands on you. Like you saw right there, it just took three hits of damage in very quick succession, much quicker than you could with maybe, let's say, a wither skeleton or a blaze. The ideal with these, then, is to use distance, so things like knockback swords, punch bows, and just simply using a bow and arrow to kill them is always great. Once they have become smaller magma cubes, the ideal thing to do is to just kill them with a sword Sword, a sweeping edge sword or even just a standard sword will kill multiple of the babies at once and unlike the slimes the babies can still hurt you so be aware of that that you still do have to deal with them so how do you actually raid and loot the fortress without getting lost and not getting all the treasure the first trick is use those torches you brought with you to spawn proof as you go this will make sure you don't have to deal with hostile mobs around you but as well as that you'll have a marker knowing which areas you've been to now let's say you come to an area where it just leads to a dead end. What I would suggest doing is when you get to the crossroads where you could go to one place or the other, simply place a piece of dirt or some other marker at the edge of that so you realize anything this way leads to a dead end. It doesn't block you from going there, but it does inform you that there's really nothing past that area. Now when you find one of the chests, what I would suggest doing is breaking the chest or at least visibly marking that it's been raided, so maybe something like putting some dirt on top of it. Now the reason why you would do this, even though it seems a bit silly, is because if you don't, you will often forget which chests have been raided and which ones haven't been. And because another fortress looks so similar, you might come to a chest, think you haven't raided it, look in it, but there's nothing. And this can stop a lot of going in circles. And so every time you find a chest, you'll know if it's new, if it's still there. But if you don't have the inventory space for something, you could always just put a block on top or make some sort of a marking. Now, as I did say earlier, one of the most common deaths in Minecraft is at the nether fortress the first time. And bringing blocks is going to really help you not die. So for instance, let's say we go over here and try and deal with this blaze. If we can put some blocks up, we can stop those flames from being able to hit us. Whereas let's say we didn't do that, they might be able to get us. And using building to your advantage in Minecraft is always a good idea, but the other big danger you can often run into is falling. So on certain parts of the nether fortress, it is incredibly common to just have an area where you can fall off straight into lava or to a fatal drop. And some of the things you can do to avoid this is when falling down, to place a block on the side that you can land on like that. Something you can also do is with your splash potion of fire resistance, if you're falling, throw it down, and when you do land in the lava, you will eventually be hit by that potion of fire resistance, letting you be in the lava and live, not dying of the fire damage. And this is of course really important, as if you die in the lava with all your items, you're going to lose the entire reason why you even went to the nether fortress in the first place, as well as probably some of your good gear, because you needed that. And I would say if you die in lava at the nether fortress, this can be one of the best ways of really stopping a Minecraft world in its tracks, because you can lose almost all your progress that way. Now, something that is very interesting is that there are two distinct sections of another fortress. There's the outside part with these massive walkways and the pillars that go down from them into lava, and there's the second part, which is the interior portion. However, all of these are linked together by one room, which is the lava well room. So you can see here we are in 
in the outside walkways, but if you go to the lava well room, usually over here would be the interior part of the fortress. However, in this fortress, it had the very rare chance of not having an interior portion, which happens if one of the walkways will generate in front of it, like it did right here. So you will never find any interior portions of this fortress. There are no chests at this nether fortress, and there are no nether wart, because both of those things only spawn in the inside. So it's kind of a cool thing to know when you find the lava well room, that you have found the bridge between the inside and outside of the fortress. Now I'm sure you think you know nether bricks very well, an extremely common block that you probably don't think too much about, but there are two nether brick recipes that almost no players know about. The first one is put nether bricks in a furnace. The second one is take nether bricks and put it in a stone cutter. You can get chiseled nether bricks. The chiseled nether bricks have a super cool texture of a wither skeleton skull on them like you can see right there. These are a really nice decorative block, especially since the skeleton skull is on every single side of the block, unlike let's say maybe the chiseled sandstone when it's not. This is a truly cool block that the majority of players have no idea is even in the game, but it's really easy to obtain and great for all kinds of decoration. The other block that we are getting by smelting it is the cracked nether bricks. These are a very interesting texture, honestly not horribly different from the standard nether bricks, but the cracks on them are different from really any other cracked texture, almost looking a little bit partially broken by like a pickaxe or something, and I really like this texture as well. So maybe consider using the cracked nether brick or the chiseled nether brick in your next build, as you probably didn't know it was in the game. And both of these were added in another update. But speaking of updates, the Nether Fortress is one of the oldest structures in the entire game, being added to the Nether in the betas of the game, initially not even having chests, and also not having wither skeletons. Blazes were the only unique mob that spawned there, although zombie pigmen did spawn there as well. The Nether Fortresses haven't actually changed much at all since then, as they're basically the same thing as we've had for over 10 years. If I failed after you've watched this this video you'll probably never want to go into the nether again, but anyway I'll see you later and hope you enjoyed. Goodbye!